Hi everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, John. Hello. Hi, Timia. Hi, John. Hi, Alex. Just going to see if Bala or uh, Ed are joining us. Hello, everybody. John, are you uh, hosting today or who's hosting? Uh, Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Manuel usually in our meetings, he's uh, really good at it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I picked up um, moderating our community meetings and we've picked up with uh, some primer work uh, where I sent out the invites for the call and I also reached out to Alex to have today's call. So we're welcoming Alex Collins from uh, Argo, the Argo project that has, I think, uh, most recently joined the CNCF. And uh, we are the serverless workflow group, a subgroup of the work, uh, serverless working group uh, that has set out to do standardization work for serverless in and a couple of other tasks that uh, have come out of an initial uh, serverless white paper work that uh, this working group has done. So um, are we waiting for anyone you have invited, Alex, or should we start? Uh, no, I was hoping that Barla would join, and he has just uh, joined today. So, so that's just that's great. Yes, I'm already in. Hi, Alex. I do. Hi, I'm Barla from Argo team. Yeah, so, so just to, just to kind of introduce myself and Barla, um, my I'm the Barla is like a is a long-standing engineer on Argo workflows project. I think Barla has been working. I mean, maybe he'll introduce himself in a second. Um, for about a year, I'm the I'm the principal engineer. I previously worked on Argo CD. Um, but now I work, I've been working on Argo workflows um, since uh, December. I, I typically um, index more on uh, community uh, aspects, and I also index on um, more strongly on kind of internal delivery at, at Intuit. Um, so Intuit we really won uh, Argo workflows um, for internally for a number of different reasons. So we run it as part of our machine learning platform. Um, we run it as part of our data processing platform. Uh, we also run it for a um, certain amount of CI um, and we run it for doing some performance um, testing as well as basically a platform for executors. And we also use it as part of our automation um, within um, our developer platform as, as well. Um, and about that's about half the work that we do and about half, other half the work is related to the open source community. And we um, leverage and utilize the open source community to help um, drive 
the direction of Argo workflows. So when it was first originally developed, I think about three years ago, Argo workflows was only really intended as a kind of very generic um, uh, cloud native, uh, i.e. Kubernetes uh, workflow uh, system. But obviously, you know, things develop over time and, and you realize you, you sit within a wider context of there. And often you're often sorted to, uh, suited to particular workflows and Argo workflows is particularly um, popular amongst the machine learning community. So we have a lot of users from, from uh, different companies for, that, that use it particularly for that. And we also have some kind of interesting CI use cases and other kind of just general um, use cases. So, so we're particularly interested in, in scaling to very large um, workloads. So typically a workload with you know, several thousand steps is, is pretty common in terms of it. You know, running on you know, different platforms. I had a very interesting conversation with um, some guys from uh, Cray uh, in, back in November about what they were doing. And we, we know we used uh, places like CERN and so forth as well for their, for their platforms. Um, so that's just a bit of introduction. Have you guys used or played around with Argo workflows um, in any kind of depth or breadth, do you think? We, we have looked at Argo. I have, I know specifically, we created the kind of markup comparison documentation. Um, I've actually ran Hello World, yeah, locally on my machine as well. <laughs> oh, this is Tihomir speaking, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there is... Uh, so, uh, some in you know level um, I cannot say I'm an expert in Argo by any means mm -hmm. uh, but yes yes I, I have played with it so I, I have one do you, would you guys like a little demo in that case would that be a good idea to do I'm gonna yeah see if I can get it up and running on my uh, local uh, machine okay yeah i have to admit personally i have i only know argo from the videos so i haven't get it uh up and running on on my system i'm um, mostly organizing the meetings and a little bit of the standards discussion so i'm not that much into uh, engineering or operating um but i i have to say i'm pretty impressed and how this reach out came about was actually the uh comment from alois of the sick app delivery who has recently reviewed our work on workflows and uh, has recommended that we reach out to more projects in the cncf ecosystem and this is how we got to argo okay good um, what I, let me share my screen uh, i usually make a mistake when i do this so this oh. Uh, do, do you see the user interface? Yes. Okay. So this is the um, this is the the user this is basically the user interface. There are basically three ways to uh, no correction four way five ways three ways <laughs> I, I escalated quickly um, uh, uh, two common ways that people interact and three other ways you can interact with Argo workflows. And so the common way, of course, is one common way is through the user interface. And this is the user interface as of uh, version 2.8. And it's, very, it's a relatively straightforward user interface. And once you've logged in, you can submit a workflow. And workflows are defined as Kubernetes YAML. So you can see this is a standard YAML. I'm, um, I'm given, a, a given a name here and uh, an entry point into a specification. The specification defines the workflow. And the workflow typically can, uh, most of the workflows reduce to a uh, directed acyclic graph. Though there's very, um, uh, you know, the, the most basic workflow is a directed acyclic graph, which executes pods as, uh, as each node, basically. Um, uh, this one um, has a, has a sequence, usually made up a sequence of templates that are, that are connected together by dependencies. So in this example, I've got um, a container here, um, which runs an image called Argo Say, which is, um, uh, prints the word hello Argo to the console. Um, and uh, that's, that's all it's done. I submit that. And then what, what we do is we figure out what the graph is for your workflow. We determine the first steps to execute and we execute those, those steps. And when they're, when they're complete, then, then your workflow is complete. This really shows a complete workflow. I'm going to show you a more advanced example uh, by uploading one called a coin flip recursive. So this is a more complicated example of a workflow. Let me just, this basically simulates flipping a coin and uh, depending what the outcome of the coin flip, and the coin flip is, is, is basically a random number here. You can see this line here. Uh, if it's heads, it's 
uh, if that random number is zero, then it's heads, otherwise it's tails. It prints that result and basically um, flips that coin repeatedly until it uh, comes to a conclusion. So let's just submit that workflow. And you can see that this um, then shows you a graph of, of those steps of uh, the workflow. Flipping the coins in each one of these steps is a, um, it is an execution of a pod. And you can see there's ones that on the right hand side of the gray have been um, skipped because uh, they didn't get to the right outcome. We're waiting to, we're waiting to flip heads and then finally we get to heads and this, this workflow's um, complete. Um, so I can, I can use the user interface to do that. Um, some other features of the user interface are things like, you know, templates. If I want reusable templates, I can, I can use those in different workflows. Um, a cron workflow, which is a workflow that executes on a schedule. So once every minute, once every hour, once every day. And then finally, the big feature here is a thing called the workflow archive. Um, so when um, to, to keep the number of workflows in your, in your running set, which costs money, you can archive them to a database for kind of doing um, data analytics afterwards. Um, not sure, there's none in here. No, normally they get automatically archived. I guess I probably got it configured off. And then obviously we've got some searching. So that's that. We also have a lot of that um, uh, in a CLI tool called Argo and you can kind of brew install uh, Argo uh, to get it running. And that has just, you know, it's very standard kind of Kubernetes style Argo command. Um, so kind of really um, key commands of this are, for example, um, submit to submit a new workflow or uh, list to list workflows. I can just list my workflows and it'll show me a list of my workflows there. And then I can get the workflow um, by using Argo get. And then I can say, you know, give me the output of YAML and it'll show me the YAML of the workflow there as well. Now, those of you uh, familiar with uh, cloud native will, will probably recognize the, the kind of standard format of a Kubernetes manifest. You've got some metadata such as the name and namespace. Uh, you've got a specification block, which you know, defines what the workflow is. And then finally, you've got a status that, uh, block, which um, explains the current status of, of the workflow and what it's been, uh, what, how it's been executing there as well. And actually, these can be executed using um, the kubectl uh, cube command. So this is the third way um, that you can uh, get access to your data. So you, you don't actually need to install an Argo binary if you've already got the kubectl binary and access to the cluster, you can just use that to get it. I did say five ways, and now I'm trying to scratch my brain of what the five, what five ways are. So that this is the way through. Um, the fourth way is programmatic access. So Argo Workflows is intended to be embedded in, um, well, one of the use cases is embedded in other platforms for executing their workflows. So Kubo Pipeline embeds Argo Workflows. And so we include some programmatic APIs in, in terms of uh, a Python uh, API uh, contributed by the, by the open source community and also uh, a Java um, API that we've uh, done for our internal users who are uh, on are using Java as well. There's a fifth way. I guess the fifth way is probably just using the API itself. So we have um, an open API you can use um, and then there is just a standard uh, swagger JSON document that, that explains how to use that. And it's actually not too dissimilar to the uh, Kubernetes API. Okay, I'm going to pause there just in case people want to ask any questions about any of the other things that I've gone over there. Um, and I'm just going to give you a bit of an example of how to find out more information about Argo workflows and what you want to do if you want to ask any questions about it. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, actually, I, I do have plenty of questions in my head. I, I wonder which are the most, uh, for this meeting and this purpose, uh, the most um, pressing. So uh, you mentioned Kubeflow pipelines, mm -hmm. and I, I heard about that before. I'm also aware of the Kubeflow DSL. How does the Python DSL re uh, relate to the Kubeflow DSL? Is that the more or less the same code base or? Um, so, so, I mean, they, I mean, they use Argo workflows as the, as the, as the component within their software to execute the workflows. And actually, they have their own Python language that they um, transform into, into YAML. And we also, we also have a separate independent um, uh, SDK that people use. As, as I mentioned, we were very popular in the, in the machine learning community. And a lot of people in the machine learning community like to use, um, like to use Python. So we kind of naturally evolve as a result. And I also learned that Argo has a larger ecosystem. You have Argo events uh, mm -hmm. that uses the gateways and sensors uh, and okay. also speaks cloud events. Mm -hmm. And um, what it, it seems that 
all the, the extra tooling, uh, Argo CD, especially where you have experiments, rollouts, and so on, it eventually, does it boil down to uh, a workflow and the, the workflow controller of resources? Or is, are these separate projects? No, they're, they're, I mean, they're separate, um, separate projects. I mean, Argo CD is a bit off to one side. I mean, it, it's, its job is basically to get the contents of your Git repository into your cluster. Um, and it, it kind of really does that by doing a series of um, kubectl apply commands under the, obviously it's, it's more complicated than that when you actually dig into the details. Um, their Argo events is, is quite closely related to Argo workflows because Argo workflows only provides the execution component of workflows and some very basic um, cron scheduling, which is quite recent. But if you want to do things like trigger a workflow from a GitHub event or um, you know, uh, you know, a drop into an S3 bucket, then Argo workflows doesn't have any kind of native support for that. And Argo events is a very, is, is you know, a kind of a sister solution people tend to use. On so I'm going to pause. I, I know that Ed and Mukalik oh, have joined. Yeah, me, I think they might have. Some hey, this is uh, Ed Lee, also from Intuit. Um, Mukalik is also on. Uh, she's our pro uh, product manager. Um, yeah, just to expand on what uh, Alex was saying, uh, as he is saying, like workflows and events are particularly closely tied, and then like Argo CD and rollouts are also kind of closely tied. You know, obviously Argo CD is for like deploying and managing applications, whereas workflows and events, it's more about uh, triggering asynchronous processing or you know batch jobs on on Kubernetes. However, they are. Uh, related in the sense that a lot of people will create pipelines, which basically consist of events triggering workflows, that kind of thing with Argo CD, for example. So one way to view it is that uh, Argo CD handles kind of the management of your typical services-based computing model, right? You have a service that's running, listening for requests, doing things. Whereas workflows is your more like your batch style of processing model and events is your kind of event driven or event based processing model. And in many complex applications, you'll actually use all three forms of processing. You'll have like a web server or something listening to things, but you also have, uh, you know, asynchronous processing where you will queue things for later processing and, you know, things triggering off of events. So, so the idea of the overall idea of the Argo project is that uh, we, you know, building a toolkit that can basically encompass all of these modes of computing so that you can put it all together. Does that make sense? Yes, perfectly. So Argo CD is um, of the integrated solution where you would automatically allow callbacks from GitHub to trigger your pipelines for continuous integration. And the workflows and events together can achieve a similar thing, but it's, it's more of the really event-driven um, processing model as you explained. Yes, well the uh, events and workflows, uh, they overlap with CD only in the sense that, um, I mean CD, we purposely, you could use workflow for CI as well, of course, like so, like event, you could use events to trigger off of GitHub, you know, events and do CI type of stuff. Um, uh, but the CD part mainly just deploys things uh, into the cluster. Um, where you could use something like events and workflows or CD is to do what we call auto sync. You know, that is when something changes in a GitHub repo, you automatically like sync it. Although Argo CD provides a separate mechanism for that. Um, CD also has a, a very kind of full featured UI, um, you know, specific to deployment. So like when you deploy something, you could see what's running. So you get health status. Uh, you can diff what's running in the cluster. So so basically, it's uh, it's kind of like serve some of the same purposes as the Kubernetes dashboard, except the Argo CD dashboard is tailored much more to, you know, applications and so on that are, that are running on the system rather than just, you know, arbitrary uh, resources, although you can't see any resource deployed in Kubernetes through that. So a lot of uh, our Argo CD users actually, you know, like an operations team, uh, you know, they want to provide a solution to their developers or users to deploy and manage applications in Kubernetes. And instead of giving each of them like, uh, you know, uh, a Kubernetes uh, like namespace access, you know, basically a cube config file. Instead, they just give them access to an Argo CD pipeline and they do all of their works through GitOps. As a result, the developers are actually using Argo CD as the main UI to Kubernetes. 
So uh, yeah, it's a much more tailored. I can add a little bit to it, uh, a little more clinical. So we are targeting two kinds of users. One uh, for ML and data processing users. Uh, there they use Argo workflows with Argo events to do any kind of data processing, moving from tools like Airflow uh, or in doing ML ops. Then the other side where it's application developers, they use Argo CD uh, to uh, sync their clusters with whatever is defined in Git. Now, Argo CD can work with any pipeline. It can work with Jenkins, it can work with Argo workflows, it can work with Tekton, any pipeline. So Argo CD does the sync part and showing the applications integrated with logs, troubleshooting, all of that. But to drive the change across different environments using Argo CD, either you can do auto sync or you can drive it through a pipeline. And that pipeline can be either Argo workflows or it can be Jenkins or any pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. So uh, the Argo CD is the much more integrated tailored to continuous delivery uh, system. Okay. And then, yes, okay. Um, yeah, the the notion of workflows from events and then uh, this being, uh, making up the event-driven processing model uh, is actually something that the, the serverless working group uh, has, um, concluded to at the at the bottom or towards the end of the white paper. Uh, so having looked at um, the, the serverless landscape, I think one conclusion is that yes, events would trigger um, functions. I think that is also the, the main term that is used in uh, the serverless working group. And then functions could emit other events to trigger um, other functions and this representing or making up a workflow. So it's a kind of a decomposing the application workflows into events and functions. And while cloud events did um, the very good job at standardizing the event format 1.0 and it has reached a very good adoption among public cloud providers, uh, there was still the, the workflow task and this is where our subgroup comes in. So in um, the serverless workflow subgroup, we, I think initial work has started uh, with adopting um, a language that is a little bit similar to Amazon States language, if you may be familiar with that, or if you know it, uh, Function Stage by Huawei. Um, and it has evolved a little bit further with uh, mostly the work done by Tihomia. And we have recently um, also applied to become a sandbox project, so to host the work done within the serverless workflow work, um, subgroup and um, to, to get a little bit more presence among the CNCF projects, so to, bec to become a sandbox project ourselves. And this is where we had a review meeting with the SIG delivery and maybe Tiomia, if you want to pull up the slides or I, I can do it to introduce where we stand with the serverless workflow language so far. Yeah, de yeah, definitely. Thanks, Manuel. Well, first, hello, everybody. I, I'm really happy about this meeting. And, and yeah, the presentation right now, Argo, is really nice, but I really like it. Uh, but my name is Tikhumi. I just wanted to introduce kind of myself, too, if you guys don't mind for a minute. I work at Red Hat. I've been around workflows for years, so it's not like we have some, even though we have a small community, we have people in place that have been around for many, many years. Uh, and the reason why I want to introduce myself, I, I went, I go all the way back to soap and people and stuff like that, those type of times where we had very custom uh, markup formats to describe workflows. And over the time, and, and, and especially at Red Hat, I'm kind of like in your guys' boat too. We, everything that I've been doing for the last decade or more is open source. And the reason why we especially got involved with CNCF, especially the workflow, uh, group and have invested tons of, and you can say the people that are on board here have invested a lot of time into it just like you guys have from, from community perspective is the reason that we really need specifications. Uh, this is like at Red Hat, I've been using BPMN2, DMN, CMMN. It's very important for any open source project, in my opinion, again, is to really utilize specifications. Um, and this is kind of like where, 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 especially now that, that we're writing all to actually complete our runtime implementation on our end for the serverless workload specification. So 
it is implementable. Uh, if you guys have any questions regarding that, I'd be more than happy. But that is kind of like the point where we come in. And I think this is kind of like the integration points. I think Argo is amazing, the runtime and everything it can do. But we are more focused here on the specification on the, on the, on the, on the model of representing uh, what you guys, uh, you know, of course, call workflows and, and, uh, and us as well. And if, can I share the screen, Manuel? Is that okay? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, Why don't you give us an introduction to... Well, uh, I kind of just want to go... I don't want to go through the whole presentation that I did with, with the SIG, but can you guys see my screen now? No? Yes. Yes. I just want to go through a couple of slides. I know our time is limited. I don't want to bore anybody here. But I, uh, I think two of our slides here kind of represent the specification overall. Number one is this slide, which you guys are under two, of course. Uh, but it's the state of kind of like the work for a world now. We were going, we are going seriously from this BPM and two kind of, you know, driven world that kind of really, because of runtime implementation, put the entire workflow kind of work under a vendor lock because of specific tooling as well as runtimes. And BPM2 is, 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 is a huge, uh, usually specification, however, it has its issues. Uh, and, and it's not discussed about that, but the point is the world is moving into what you guys are also doing, JSON, YAML based workflow for, for serverless. And why? Because the, we want to simply orchestrate event-based workflows in, in, in the cloud. And these number of different types of JSON YAML-based markups is growing every day. And there is a need for standardizing this. I think also on your guys' end, I think you guys have just said, okay, we can work with Tecton pipelines, but it, can you really take your workflow notation that you currently have and port it to different types of not only cloud platforms, but also runtimes that exist. Um, there is, that's where the kind of specifications are important. And the second slide I wanted to show is basically, and I'll make it bigger, is kind of what the serverless specif uh, workflow specification is trying to do. Uh, again, we're not providing runtimes. We're providing similar to your uh, Python definition of your workflow, we're providing a JSON schema. That is the core of our uh, model definition. Uh, out of this JSON schema, then we can create APIs, SPIs, and also we're working, uh, think uh, in the future providing a TCK because every specification definitely needs that. Um, and what implementations then would provide is the runtime. So the goal of the serverless specification is to provide the JSON and YAML, both formats are um, supported by the specification to be able to execute on different runtimes on different cloud platforms. Um, that's kind of where we are at. We, we, we are working as a team on, on defining this JSON schema uh, that actually, you know, they can be used across different runtimes. Um, so kind of like, and um, what else? Yeah, this is kind of like the problem that we see currently. Um, and I, I don't know how it is with Argo, you guys can tell me, but when you're starting to use a workflow solution currently, you're kind of in a vendor lock, especially on the workflow model. And also workflow notation, because if you see things like AWS, um, Amazon, Microsoft, things like that, every, everybody has a different model that are represent the workflows with. Now our specification does not go into it, uh, maybe yet, but this, we really focus just on the model. So from the integration perspective between the two groups, I think we have to w talk about the notation and what can be expressed with Argo workflows and can that the same thing be expressed with, with, with the, our current JSON schema. Um, now again, is there interest in that on your end? I don't know, right? But at least, you know, with this meeting, I think we can start maybe some discussion um, on, on, on that end. What do you guys think? First question, is there any other implementation of this specification yet? Anybody else? 
as far as we know, no. We have an implementation with a Red Hat, and I can I can do a demo if you guys want with that, which is a fully event-based uh, triggered workflow. Um, if you guys are interested in that, I'd be more than happy to do it now or or whenever there you know yeah appropriate. Yeah, I would be interested in seeing it. Uh, of course, it didn't, I guess if you're going to do this kind of spec, you do need some kind of reference implementation, correct? Yep. Um, just like what you guys have a, a runtime engine, which takes your uh, custom Kubernetes resource, the YAML that you produce, and converts it probably into an internal object structure. That's type of the runtime that any type of runtime would probably do, right? You need to represent the JSON and YAML in some sort of internal object model and then can be executed, correct? And are you also looking at specifying uh, the event specification as well? Oh, yes, yes. And I think I want to just show this slide maybe, which kind of, what, what, what is the serverless uh, workflow? We focus on a language that, is a, that allows workflows to orchestrate microservices. What does that mean by microservices? Event-based triggered workflows that can be, of course, repeatable. Uh, there is three parts of the serverless workflow specification, which are function definitions. In our case, we, of course, do not care how these functions are written. They can be polyglot, and we're not kind of soap where they define that, but we define how these functions can be executed, okay? Um, that's under the function, so we can go look into the example. Then we have events. Events are a core type of um, uh, structure in the, in the in, in, what that means is events can start workflow execution, events can be produced when the workflow execution ends, and also events can be produced during the, the execution of workflows. Now, as far as parameters goes, there are passed to functions, they're JSON, so they can be events as well. So cloud event format, which is a format that represents events in a JSON format can be used pretty much throughout the, the, the workflow. Now, the third part is what you guys call steps, and we currently call it states, um, are the building blocks or the control flow, flow logic blocks that allows you to do things like what you guys already can do, for example, parallel execution, a split join type of situation, and stuff like that. So we have, let me go get to this slide if I can real quick. Yeah. And is your go to uh, produce this like that end users will use or that uh, other workflow things will like kind of compile down to essentially? Um, excuse me, I didn't, didn't hear the question very well. I apologize. This, so, you know, this JSON, uh, you know, just this JSON syntax and everything and is the idea that end users like, you know, ML engineers, data scientists are actually going to write their workflows in this spec or more that, you know, they will be using something else, but it will translate or compile down to this spec. The idea is just similar uh, Argo, uh, which you just showed in your, in your really nice demo, is that just like your hub, you allow users to enter in YAML code. This is the same type of aspect. We do not, we, it's, it's, it's users are supposed to write their JSON and YAML code uh, depending uh, that, that conforms to the JSON schema. And just to show you that. So this, you know, this spec is intended for use by end users, you're saying? Yes, yes, sir. So you said something about model and notation. I thought, uh, and then you said you're focusing on model. Definitely. And the reason for that is um, number so one, Go ahead. I'm so sorry. this is the model. Uh, I didn't understand the difference uh, you meant as model versus notation, because if this is the user spec that the user is supposed to write, this is the notation or there was No, a... this is the model. The notation would be the graphical or the visual representation of your workflow, right? Okay. Okay. So we do not tackle that part. I don't think Argo at this time does either, or maybe I'm incorrect, right? But no, no, wait, so, so do users write uh, like JSON or yes. YAML or do they create the workflows visually or both? No, in the, for this specification, we only focus for 
on the markup on the, or the model, which is the JSON or the YAML. Right. But, um, but, you, but you expect you end users to write that directly, right? Yes, uh, with the help, of course, and this is kind of like where I wanted to, to, to kind of go, just one second. Um, okay. We company, do have... Uh, we, how many think, uh, implementations of this spec are there today? Currently, just one. Okay, how many users are using it today? Uh, currently, as far as use cases, right, we were pushing this as far... No, I mean, how many users and users are using this? We have, have a community in Red Hat of the Kojito project, which are adopting it right now. This is fairly started, you know, the specification has been evolving for over a year and a half now. Uh, we just started over six months ago doing the implementation, which has been completed and now we're adopting. But as far as that, I, this will be pushed also as far as the Red Hat, um, I'm just going to talk for myself. Um, how do you say pro product? So it will also have community users as far as our community. Right. So it's currently mostly used inside Red Hat. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, as far as an open source project um, for which used to be JVPM and rules, and we have evolved that into a new project called Cogito, which now also includes the support for BPM and 2DM and CM and, uh, and now also the serverless workflow specification as well. Okay. So we see it as one of the many formats which, which uh, and we are also targeting Kubernetes and stuff like that on our end, but that has nothing to do with the specification. I, I, I don't wanna waste anybody's time. But the nice thing also about your YAML, which is an extension of JSON and also the JSON format, you can write, uh, you can write, um, how do you say, uh, plugins. For example, I wrote a VS Code plugin to, for, for- um, or, or like IDE for, support. Yeah, RDE support. So one of the things that both we can do, uh, both the Argo and, and, and also anything that has all the YAMLs ones is write very simple IDE support to help users write the JSON or the YAML. Um, I think that's nice. And just a, a, a couple of points I want to just highlight. These are, these are one of them will sound like a low uh, technical detail is that basically all all our workflows boil down to directed acyclic graphs. Um, so in the way that if your programming language is Turing complete, you can do anything any other programming language can do. If you can if you can boil down uh, your workflow down into a directed acyclic graph where each node is is a function invocation then you can you can basically model every grant every workflow that you need to anything else you do on that until that is a, is, a, is bonus but also arguably syntactic sugar and we have plenty of kind of effectively syntactic sugar in our, in our charts um, and and that sdk aspect is really important for um uptake of people i can see that the defining a workflow specification allows you to really kind of decouple those two aspects have one organization build various different SDKs in different languages and another organization um, build the actual execute, the, uh, the workflow uh, executor as well quite, quite separately. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't underestimate the importance of, of that kind of tooling to users. Our users don't really like using YAML at all. They, they, you know, they, they tolerate it but it doesn't have you know, anything like the kind of tooling that they're used to when, when writing code such as also completion, um, you know, syntax, you know, sophisticated syntax highlighting. Yeah, YAML doesn't, doesn't give you any of, of that. You effectively have to code your YAML, submit it to be executed, and if it gets rejected by the executor, then you know it's syntactically inv invalid. It's much better to be able to do that in the, in the IDE. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The only thing we have, I've done personally, we had conversations with IBM. They have this tool called Node Red, and they're building a palette for it. But that has nothing to do, especially because we, in the specification, like I said, we haven't tackled uh, um, the notation part yet. That might yeah. come later <laughs> on, and maybe it's a collaboration between you know our teams together or whoever community-wise might be interested. But that's a big task, you know, mm -hmm. and especially if you we already have an amazing, really BPMN is as far, I talk about it a lot, but the notation part is really useful and nice. And, you know, having to do something differently 
or do we reuse something that already exists in that regard is a decision that still has to be made at the end. But I, do, I did want to show from our end, just real quickly, and you guys can go through it. We did create um, somewhat like examples. I took this from <laughs> your guys' examples. I hope you guys don't mind. And we have co uh, I've written comparable side-by-side uh, -side comparison between Argo and the serverless workflow. And I think it's really showed a lot of different things. Uh, number one, I think from functionality wise, so far what I've seen, now of course your examples might not cover all the functionality that Argo does. So maybe we can work on this, but they are fairly comparable so far what I've seen, right? Um, there are some things that Argo does that I really like, they're different, uh, that we currently do not support in the serverless workflow specification, but we are not set in stone and we can collaborate on how we can possibly match up functionality wise. Uh, what I st can see do so you, far. Do you have an example of a DAG if you go down? Yes, I think actually, uh, yeah, I took the DAG example actually from Argo. Um, yeah. By the way, I like your uh, comparison here. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's really important to have this in order to actually say, hey, can we even integrate this? Or is this even useful? Um, and I hope to add more examples and hopefully to get help from you guys, which examples would be good to add. And, and that's kind of like maybe something we can talk together about. But what I've seen so far, my understanding is that yes, the serverless workload specification is more verbose. So in most of the examples, you will see that the amount of lines of YAML that you need is <laughs> typically more <laughs> than what you guys currently have. So we can work on actually reducing that. I think that's yeah. one of the tasks we got yeah. out of. It. You see common tags we <clears throat> get over and over, right? Like operation default. Yes, definitely. So that's something that we can work on. But on the other side, I think that what serverless for workflow specification has right now, it's, it's actually defines a more, uh, no, I don't want to say readable, but it is somewhat more structured uh, than what Argo has. And I think that's maybe a trade-off that we can kind of look into and compare and contrast and work on together if you guys are, of course, interested. Uh, uh, in that. I think the serverless workflow specification defines more concrete states with types that can be more easily translated for tooling and kind of more readability, if you can even get that within what we're doing, more or less without tooling, but that's kind of like the comparison. Uh, there is some things that Argo does specifically on the functionality and that we do differently. For example, timeouts. I, I, I know ex one of the examples, you guys have a workflow wide timeout where you start a workflow and you say, okay, if it doesn't complete within a minute, just exit, right? Um, in, in the server, server specification where it's done a little differently, which is for example, timeout on, on events actually occurring to start the workflow instance or timeouts on actually executing a function or for your guys' uh, 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 in your guys' example, a function that's defined in a pod. So that's kind of like the difference. Another difference is that, for example, where you guys, and you can see we, we had to use, in order for me to, to translate these examples, we had to use metadata. And I'm trying to figure out one example. Oh, for example, this. For example, that's one thing that, that is different in that you guys in, uh, have the container definitions, right? Where you, ex you explicitly say my function or my fun function that is exposed in Kubernetes is in a container where the serverless workflow specification kind of abstracts that into functions, right? Where, so where, do you, where do you map that to a container to, if it is a container? Uh, because we don't really uh, only work on Kubernetes level. No, no, no. But if it is implemented as a container on Kubernetes, where do you Well, we have two, uh, the specification defines two parameters. One is a type, which is a user defined type. So you can use oh, okay. the type parameter to kind of specify your runtime 
this is a REST API, or this is something that runs on the container, or this is a Kafka event, or this is a Java or a Python interface, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. also we have metadata uh, extension points on both, kind of like extension points uh, uh, on both the um, state level or the definition level, but we also have extension points on the whole uh, workflow level. Um, so you can implement things like logging or tracing or entire extension points that you can implement if you want to. Right. So I guess uh, one big difference is that, um, you know, this is not only for Kubernetes or even containers. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a specification. We cannot focus on one thing. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, but hopefully we can, as far as functionality goes, uh, it can be used or not we're trying to figure that out whereas, uh, yeah whereas argo workflows they're only for kubernetes so so as i see it it will be more like a layer on top of argo because uh, somebody needs to generate the kubernetes manifest argo these are all kubernetes manifests which directly can be applied to kubernetes so uh, so somebody either argo team or somebody else has to write like a mapping layer on top of the Argo specs to convert this to the Argo Kubernetes manifest. Yeah, assuming that the languages reach uh, feature um, balance so that we could represent everything in serverless workflow as Argo can currently uh, express it with the workflow um, CRD, then yes, this would be simply a layer on top. If there was translation to be done, I think that's manageable. If, if there was, however, any mismatch, like the workflow timeout that Tiomia has already identified, then there's more work probably to be done on the language specification. The thing is with a um, little less, uh, um, adopters, like Argo is a big project that has lots of users and is uh, field proven and is a um, production ready implementation. So at the serverless workflow subgroup, it's uh, rather an attempt as you've already seen, we're not covering the function binding. Uh, so the binding to a Kubernetes um, platform or to container environment is, is uns remains unspecified. But there is the common concept of uh, having pieces of work uh, expressed or, or modularized in functions and then to uh, give some control structure to um, the the execution of this work so i think at this level uh, the workflow language tries to express um, a control logic and then uh, so i'm with nokia Labs, and uh, we are looking at it to to find a way to have a common um, description language, we are ex executing stuff completely differently. I think also Cogito does. So Cogito, as I if I understand correctly, is uh, very much tailored to Java functions and can do um, through other function bindings, in, uh, can invoke a lot of more different uh, workloads. Uh, we, for example, we would um, compile the entire workflow into a single container runtime. So it's a completely different execution model underneath that. But we, what we want, would like to have is a commonly adopted or accepted uh, workflow language and maybe also reaching consensus on the terminology with uh, several projects because uh, eventually what we've already figured is um, Amazon states language uh, calls these in individual stop states. I don't think so in state language, there is only one uh, forward pass, uh, but a state machine would not be per se uh, acyclic. So uh, there is a lot of alignment necessary uh, to get into, a, uh, which eventually benefits the user, right? If the user has only this one learning curve to adopt this one terminology and then knows how to operate in different environments. So this is, I think, where we want to get to with the standardization of the workflow language. Right. So, so do you have any interest from Amazon or uh, I guess Microsoft and like uh, also adopting this for like persistent uh, cloud functions or stuff like that? So I know there are several larger parties involved in cloud events uh, specification and in the serverless working group. Um, their interest in this subgroup task has been uh, 
I don't know, maybe sidetracked a lot because of the cloud events specification, but uh, also a little bit hesitant to jump to workflow specification. We had uh, ideas that maybe it is too early uh, to talk about workflow specification, um, or that rather uh, the statefulness of serverless executions needs to be discussed first. Um, that would be your artifact layer. Uh, so maybe, um, maybe it is too early yet for them, or um, um, maybe yeah. we just need to get a little bit further, like a chicken and egg problem, to have a little bit more meat before we can actually have uh, them participate in the discussion. And is your, and is I don't your know what uh, intent also uh, that this could model something like airflow as well? Like should users <laughs> use airflow through this specification? That is not in your scope. Sorry, I'm not aware of the airflow. Apache yeah, Airflow. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. What we're trying to do, number one, is create, number one thing is vendor neutrality and we want to be portable. I think this the situation currently with the, all these different workflows based YAML and, 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 and JSON based notations, there has to be some standardization and there will be. If it's not with this specification, it will be somebody else that creates one. And I think Argo is a project and, and you guys can prove me wrong, but I've been working on open source so long, writing your own markup for something has its limits and it has its kind of life expectancy because if it's not this specification with CNCF, like I said, a specification for this will be created. And it really depends who adopts it. Uh, do big guns adopt it like Microsoft and AWS and those guys, Amazon? Probably not, but they might in the future. But as far as open source type of smaller project type, it's very important for survival of, especially of your notation. And you guys know this better than me. We had things before like custom markups, even with our uh, BPMN, before BPMN, and it always fell short. And I think also other smaller size open source companies can, can, can um, talk about that. Specifications help you in many ways. And I think we're not perfect. You know, there's a lot of things that we want to change it. We would like to get and a community exposure to make our stuff better. But at the same time, we want to also work with you guys. So that's the type of thing. Yes, like Manuel said, we're in a chicken and egg thing. We're a specification at CNCF that is looking for adoption. But at the same time, we need adoption in order to be allowed to grow. So <laughs> this is kind of like where we would like to find some sort of community within other projects, some sort of interest we're not saying do one or the other, but we would also be willing, of course, to help projects there say, okay, we have some interest here and we would like to have uh, some sort of adoption for the future to help there out as well, as far as pull requests and help there as well. Because at the end, we're all CNCF and we're all open source Apache 2 license, right? So that's the kind of thing we're looking for right now. Um, and yeah. What, what do you see as the main, uh... Um, I don't know, like, is the goal that this is glue that can glue together workflows that run on containers, Kubernetes, uh, Lambda, whatever, or is the, or are you tar targeting a particular application areas? Like, what are you focusing on in creating this back? The focus is very similar. I think what my, the majority of the current JSON and YAML based workflow specification is, which is to or, or a workflow orchestration. Currently, especially in, 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 in the serverless community, you have many, many different microservices deployed. They might run some on Kubernetes, but some oh, might not run on example, Kubernetes. Example, uh, that's not exactly the question. Oh, sorry. Uh, for example, how important is it that your spec be able to encompass both FAS as well as like Argo style Kubernetes workflows, container based workflows? Um, I think it is important to do both because at the end of the day, we, we strive, I think, to, 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 to be able to re model workflows in both worlds. Okay. And I'll, is there such a big difference in those? 
Uh, yes, I, I believe there is. Like um, in, in the execution environment, there is. But we also at Intel we like to distinguish between uh, serverless in terms of a, a programming model. You know, basically how developers write their code versus. Uh, you know, like the execution model, like is it using containers or what? Uh, and the programming model, in, you know, developers at Intuit, they're not really interested right now in writing uh, applications using a fast style. They actually find it much more difficult to do it that way. Uh, however, there is a lot of interest in terms of uh, using events to trigger workflows and doing, you know, that or more coarse grained async processing. So I don't know if that distinction makes sense. But. Yeah, it does. Thank you. So, so unifying very disparate workflow models like FAS or event based model. I mean, you could think of it as workflows or event based processing right there, or you know, what uh, FAS even. Uh, but unifying very disparate uh, models like FAS versus batch versus you know, uh, Lambda, that kind of thing. Uh, it may be very hard to do that uh, and target a particular community. So that's just my random thought. But, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, so since we are almost over time, uh, I had one question like, uh, does Red Hat or any of the uh, members of this work group have any uh, resource who can map the two project specs? Like, do you guys have anybody who would be interested in doing it? Yeah. Contribute like the conversion, because as I said, it has to be a layer above because Argo is very Kubernetes. It is Kubernetes CRD and manifests. Right. Uh, how, how is the work split up today? I guess in the working group, who's working on what? Uh, first of all, I find this very interesting. And yes. Like, I think and and long-term, yes, specifications help. Totally yeah, agree. I think we should definitely have some more conversations. I think, personally, I, you know, I think it would help uh, us kind of map out the space and at least figure out what part the Argo workflows part fits into. I mean, we have our idea of where it fits into, but we're not so familiar with things outside of that domain. Um, and of course, you know, uh, you, you're also representing communities, right? Uh, of users either inside your company or more your, your customers. So, you know, I think that engagement would be very useful. Uh, Definitely, yeah. But how is the work for the working group currently split up? Like who is working on what? Uh, well, we're currently a very small team, right? We have a couple of, we have of course, Manuel with Nokia. We have, um, of course, Red Hat. We have Camunda on board and Huawei. And we have a small community of, 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 of people who constantly, you know, join meetings or are involved. Uh, as far as work does, we have some growth need, of course, on the community side. We do kind of things. We have a roadmap where we add uh, what we are planning to do. And basically, we're doing it as time, of course, allows, <laughs> like other CNCF projects and things as well. Okay. Yeah, um, you would... Uh... Uh, I'm sure this is all public documentation, but if you would just uh, send us a link to your roadmap, that would help us. Yeah, definitely. I'll uh, share it. So, so like Red Hat, for example, yeah. I mean, I, I'm assuming everyone is contributing to the spec. They're interested in doing the spec, but Red Hat also has an implementation that they're working on. Yeah, I mean, we I can. I'll, I'll do the demo because of time now in the next meeting. If we absolutely, we we have, not so the demo. So. Yeah, but I do want to say there is interest. I'm not, even though we work for different companies, of course, since this is a specification, we're not pushing any interest into this at all. Uh, yeah, however, we are looking at the entire community <laughs> needs and having the Argo community involved in just, you know, allowing us would be a huge thing for us. I don't think you guys understand how big this would be for us to have such a community with, of you guys that have not only in implementation, but also much larger community and exposure and everything basically to kind of uh, help us out. And at the same time, you know, of course, we would we would be involved into 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 helping with the integration as well. So it's not like we don't have hands. In yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we already work with several groups at Red Hat, actually both the Argo CD as well as. Definitely, definitely. So that that, that would be nice as far 
you know, if you guys see interest, I do see the need, pos- you know, for Argo would be nice. For us, of course, it's, it's, it's um, within CNCF, we could use a little bit of help to kind of push us forward as far as this I- infrastructure goes, growth within the CNCF um, ecosystem goes. Um, because with CNCF, it seems very difficult. It's, it's easy to do projects but it's harder to do specifications without some sort of adoption. So, so you know, we're kind of here saying, okay, uh, we're here. We have something I think that is useful. Um, it is of course not perfect and needs community work and community uh, love basically. Uh, however, I think there is something and, and if we can possibly work with other CNCF projects like you guys, that would be big for Big yeah, so currently we have uh, monthly community meetings and the next one being first Monday in June. Uh, that is, I think, first. And uh, also for next week, Monday, we have a primer call scheduled, I think about the same time as today's call, um, in which we discuss uh, the base concepts of the language and whether we took the right turns um, and try to summarize this into sort of a conceptual motivational uh, primer paper. Um, personally, I can say I'd be very happy to welcome you uh, to the calls. And um, for me, in Nokia Bellups, we I have the similar situation of whether I should uh, root for adopting it or, or not. Uh, <laughs> um, because so we've recently, um, we've launched Kanix microfunctions, some edge serverless uh, platform. And I'm in the same boat here of uh, whether we should uh, do the effort and implement uh, this workflow language specification or um, try to shape it a little bit further before we do so. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I guess being too early is just as bad as being too late. So, it's <laughs> so we'll go back and we'll look at the comparison, those examples that, that that's on your GitHub repo, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, and what was what is the name of the Red Hat project? Um, I don't know if there is any documentation available. K O G I T O. Yeah, there is. We- <coughs> sorry, a website and all kinds of stuff. And I'll link you personally. I'll send you in chat all kinds of links to examples and everything. Okay. If you want. But yeah, I'm just not. Pro- <laughs> I'm not. We're not promoting that on the ser- specification and whatsoever because yeah. at, the, at the end it's just a runtime implementation. Oh, we need many of. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, what we find is that like for, you know, I'm not sure about specs, but we find that for you know, actual like tools that you want people to use, it's obviously very important to decide which community um, you're targeting, uh, you know, because you can't like go after like three different communities at once. Um, so uh, I don't know if you have broad agreement there or whether uh, some people interested in spec right now are more like fast type of models. Others are more ML processing type of things, but they are very different communities. So, uh, uh, and 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 if it's too early, then it's kind of hard to create a spec that will be adopted by multiple communities. So those are some of our concerns. I'm sure you have some more. Yeah, and I I think you're very correct in that what we have within the specification as far as people involved our people have been uh, around business process modeling for many, many years. So yes, currently the specification is kind of tending in that direction, but I think that's where kind of like this talk, for example, is big because then we can reach out to you guys for help on all the other environments as well and get help and input on how to improve. Yeah, I mean, when we were starting the Argo workflow project, um, we obviously looked at all the different workflow engines that were available, and there were many, right, even at that time. Uh, um, and so we tried to pick an area we feel um, was not, didn't have too many uh, existing versions targeting that particular use case or community, and one that we felt with is likely to grow rapidly. So that's how we kind of picked the uh, ML or data processing area, but we'd love to, of course, uh, understand better what the other members of the 
working group are thinking in terms of what use cases or communities uh, or what they personally want to use it for. So, so this is great. Uh, yeah, we'd love to set up a follow-up meeting to get further into this. Yes, perfect. Would you like to join in our next community call or should we make it a separate right. series? That's fine. Uh, if, if, if they're not too busy and uh, you know, that would be great. If you have, have a packed agenda, then it'd probably be better to have a separate. No, I think we're good. We separated out the primer work, so. Okay. Yes. Please uh, send us uh, invitation, forward us invitations for it. Yes, I will. Of course. Thanks. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet you all. All right. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> great stuff. And you guys know to reach, you can just reach out to us on the Slack so if you want to ask any more questions. We'll yes, do. we will. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks all. Bye. Thank, Thank you guys. You. Have a great day.